In the last video, we set up a MATLAB code that calculated a function. It was half of a Gaussian. We calculated the function, we plotted it, and even performed sort of a crude discrete integration. Let's go ahead and run that. And so we see our half Gaussian and our crude sort of first guess at integration was uh, 0.8862. In this video, we're going to try to answer the question, how many points do we need to get an accurate answer? We've used a thousand here. Is that way too many or way too few? We don't know, so let's get into that. All right, so let's create a, a break here or a nice little visual section header so we know we're going we know that we're going into the second section of code so we'll call this convergence study okay well we need to pick the limits we also know this is something that we're going to look at next but first we want to answer the question how many points so let's pick our limits to just be minus 10 to positive 10 and we understand that may not be enough All right, now we want to pick the range of values for n. Range of values for n. So let's call this n dat. So we're going to create a number, and every number in here will be a value of n that we will try in our discrete integration. So let's just go one to maybe, I don't know, how about 200? And we can change that number if we don't get a good answer. We would like to record the value of our integral. So how about we say I dat equals, and we would like to create an array of zeros that's the same length as n dat. Here's a neat way to do that. What if we just multiplied n dat by zero, and now we've initialized all zeros. Okay, now we're ready to perform the convergence study. Perform. Convergence study. And so we'll set up a loop to go over each number that we've stored in n dat. So we'll say 4m equals 1 to length of n dat. And by putting a length in here and not any kind of hard coded number, I can simply change this to 500 and everything else in the code will work. I'm always writing my code that way. Okay. So if we run this, we should see exactly what happened last time and hopefully no errors. Okay, so we hopefully have not made any mistakes so far. Now inside this loop, we pretty much need to do everything we did in the last video all over again. So the first thing is get the value of n for this iteration. Get next value of n. So we'll say n equals n dat, and it's the mth value in there. All right, now we need to go ahead and calculate the function. Well, just like we did before, the first thing we had to do was calculate the spacing from point to point. So that's the span divided by n. So it's xb minus xa divided by our current value of n. Now we can create this array of values that will be the center positions of each rectangle in our discrete integration. So it's xa plus an array times dx. And remember what was in that array, 0 0.5, all the way up to big N minus 0 0.5. Then we can go ahead and calculate the function. So we've done everything. We now have our function. And so what we'll do is we'll integrate it and store that answer. Perform integration. So I equals sum of F times DX. That one line does our integration. But we need to store that, and we're storing that in I dat. So the mth value in I dat will simply be I. Now, if we ever get to the point where we're playing with very large numbers, this loop could be very slow. And I don't want to wait till the end of that before I display my results, because what if I can see something's going wrong right away? I can hit Control C, I can stop it, I can fix it, and I can go back. So anytime I'm writing a loop that may be very slow to calculate, 
I want to visualize intermediate results whenever possible. So let's go ahead and do that. Show intermediate results. So it's going to be updating the plot as things are being calculated. So what we would like to plot along the horizontal axis is our values of n. And then vertically, we'd like to show our integration. And of course, we have to follow this with a draw now. Now, let's go ahead and run this and you'll, you'll see what happens. And the, the range of values of x keeps changing. And it's a little bit kind of, oh, it didn't change. <laughs> Oh, but it is jumping down here and going to all zeros. And I'll show you how to fix that. I guess that's what was in my mind. But it's neat. We can see the integration jump around and go crazy with a few number of points, but it is slowly converging. And we might ask, why this oscillation here? And that really has to do with this being a half Gaussian. And it's really our rectangles that, you know, sometimes maybe fall exactly on that or they're sort of walking back and forth around where that, that chop is right at x equals zero. Okay, let's just set some x and y axis limits. Uh, so we can do x lim, and we can make this a little bit autom automated. So it'll be the minimum value in n dat because we might change that and not start at one and start at something larger. And we'll go all the way up to the maximum value in n dat. And our y lim. And well, let's go back and look at this and let's pick a value like four. So we'll be looking at this region all the way across. So we'll go from, let's say, uh, yeah, zero up to four. Zero up to four. And like always, if we don't like it, we can change it. Let's go ahead and run that. And we've zoomed in a little bit. But what we can see is we are converging to a value of, you know, just under one than our preliminary in, uh, integration in our previous video, 0.8862, something like that. So that seems pretty consistent. Let's go ahead and just label our axes. X label, and along this axis, that was N. And along the Y axis, uh, we'll call that our integration. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot to dress up these graphics. I'm not really making these graphics suitable for putting into our homework or our publication. I'd want to play more with access limits, getting consistent number of digits, font sizes, all this sort of stuff. I'm not going to do that. I'm just dressing it up enough so that I can do my work here. And When I think everything's working, then I could dress up my graphics for the homework or a publication or something like that. Okay, so... This is a convergence study, and we definitely see that our integration is converging. But really, how do we know how accurate this is? At some point, this all looks the same to me. Uh, intuitively, we know that it's, it's refining those smaller and smaller decimals, but we can't see this here. And so just plotting the, the value of the integration as a function of increasing values of n's does not tell us much if we want accuracy out to some arbitrary number of digits. What it can do is I can say roughly around, yeah, I'll call it 200 points. We get a good enough integration that we could do some, some quick sort of preliminary analysis. But if my problem requires accuracy out to so many digits, um, I can't do it that way. I need to do something a little bit more sophisticated. And that'll be the objective of the next video. So we've done a crude convergence study here and realize we can't get quite the information from this that we thought. And we will fix that in the next video. So I will see you then.